sinner, have mercy upon me. God, be gracious unto me, a sinner, have mercy upon me. Oh God, be gracious unto me, a sinner, have mercy upon me. Master, give the blessing. Blessed is our God, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. O oh, heavenly King, O oh, Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who is in all places and fillest all things, treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and abide in us, cleanse us from every stain, and save our souls, O oh, good one. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal. Have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and in the age of the ages. Amen. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy God, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive us, us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever. Granting to thy people victory over all their enemies, and by the power of thy cross, preserving thy common law. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. To thou who of thine own good will was lifted up upon the cross, O Christ our God. Bestow thy bounties upon the new nation which is called by thy name. Make glad in thy might those who lawfully govern that with them we may be led to victory over our adversaries, having in thine aid a weapon of peace and a trophy invincible, both now and ever and unto ages of ages of men. O champion, God, who cannot be put to confusion, despise not our petitions, O good and all praise, Theotokos. Establish the way of the Orthodox, save those who have been called upon to govern us, leading us to that victory which is from heaven. For thou art she who gave birth to God, and alone art blessed. Have mercy on us, O God, according to thy great goodness. Hear us, we pray, and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for all pious and orthodox Christians. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Amen. Bless Father in the name of the Lord. Glory to the holy consubstantial life giving and undivided Trinity, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill toward men. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill toward men. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill toward men. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show so forth thy praise. O Lord, why are they multiplied that afflict me? Many rise up against me. Many say unto my soul, There is no salvation for him and his God. But thou, O Lord, art my helper, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy mountain. I laid me down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord will help me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. 
Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all who without cause are mine enemies. The teeth of sinners hast thou broken, salvation is of the Lord, and thy blessing is upon thy people. I lay me down and slept, I awoke, for the Lord will help me. O Lord, rebuke me not in thy anger, nor chasten me in thy wrath. For thine arrows are fastened in me, and thou hast laid thy hand heavily upon me. There is no healing in my flesh in the face of my wrath, and there is no peace in my bones in the face of my sin. For mine iniquities are risen higher than my head, as a heavy burden have they pressed heavily upon me. My bruises are become noisome and corrupt in the face of my folly. I have been wretched and utterly bowed down until the end all the day long. I went with downcast face, for my loins are filled with mocking, and there is no healing in my flesh. I am afflicted and humbled exceedingly. I have roared from the groaning of my heart. O Lord, before thee is all my desire, and my groaning is not hid from thee. My heart is troubled, my strength hath failed me, and the light of mine eyes. Even this is not with me. My friends and my neighbors drew nigh over against me, and stood, and my nearest of kin stood afar off, and they that sought after my soul used violence. And they that sought evils for me spake vain things and craftiness all the day long did they meditate. But as for me, like a deaf man, I heard them not, and was as a speechless man that openeth not his mouth. And I became as a man that heareth not, and that hath in his mouth no reproofs. For in thee have I hoped, O Lord, thou wilt hearken unto me, O Lord my God. For I said, ne Let never mine enemies rejoice over me. Yea, when my feet were shaken, those men spoke boastful words against me. For I am ready for scourges, and my sorrow is continually before me. For I will declare mine iniquity, and I will take heed concerning my sin. But mine enemies live and are made stronger than I, and they that hated me unjustly are multiplied, and they that render me evil for good slander me because I pursued goodness. Forsake me not, O Lord my God, depart not from me. Be attentive unto my help, O Lord of my salvation. Forsake me not, O Lord my God, depart not from me. Be attentive unto my help, O Lord of my salvation. O God, my God, unto thee I rise early at dawn. My soul hath thirsted for thee. How often hath my flesh longed after thee in a land barren and untrodden and unwatered. So in the sanctuary have I appeared before thee to see thy power and thy glory. For thy mercy is better than lives. My lips shall praise thee, so shall I bless thee in my life. And in thy name will I lift up my hands as with marrow and fatness, let my soul be filled. And with lips rejoicing shall my mouth praise thee. If I remember thee on my bed, at the dawn I meditated on thee, for thou art become my helper, and the shelter of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul hath cleaved after thee, thy right hand hath been quick to help me. But as for these in vain have they sought after my soul, they shall go into the nethermost parts of the earth. They shall be surrendered unto the edge of the sword, portions for foxes shall they be. But the king shall be glad in God, every one shall be praised that sweareth by him, for the mouth of them is stopped that speak unjust things. At the dawn I meditated on thee, for thou art become my helper, in the shelter of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul hath cleaved after thee, thy right hand hath been quick to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. O Lord God of my salvation, by day have I cried, and by night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee. Bow down thine ear unto my supplication. For filled with evils is my soul, and my life unto Hades hath drawn nigh. I am counted with them that go down into the pit. I am become as a man without help, free among the dead, like the bodies of the slain that sleep in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more, and they are cut off from thy hand. They laid me in the lowest pit, in the darkness, in the shadow of death. Against me is thine anger made strong. And all thy billows hast thou brought upon me. Thou hast removed my friends afar from me. They have made me an abomination unto themselves. I have been delivered up and have not come forth. Mine eyes are grown weak from poverty. I have cried unto thee, O Lord, the whole day long. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. Nay, for the dead would thou work wonders, or shall physicians raise them up that they may give thanks unto thee? Nay, shall any in the grave tell of thy mercy and of thy truth in that destruction? Nay, shall thy wonders be known in that darkness of thy righteousness in the land that is forgotten? But as for me unto thee, O Lord, have I cried, and in the morning shall my prayer come before thee. Wherefore, O Lord, dost thou cast off my soul, and turnest thy face away from me? A poor man am I, and in troubles, yea, for my youth, having been exalted, I was humbled and brought to distress. Thy furies have passed upon me, and thy terrors have sorely troubled me. They came round about me like water all the day long, they encompassed me about together. Thou hast removed the far from me, friend and neighbor, and mine acquaintances, because of my misery. O Lord God of my salvation, by day have I cried, and by night before thee, let my prayer come before thee, bow down thine ear unto my supplication. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all that he hath done for thee, who is gracious unto all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy infirmities, who redeemeth thy life from corruption, who crowneth thee with mercy and compassion, who fulfilleth thy desire with good things, and that you shall be renewed as the eagles. The Lord performeth deeds of mercy and executeth judgment for all them that are wrong. He hath made his ways known unto Moses, unto the sons of Israel, the things that he hath willed. 
Compassionate and merciful is the Lord, long-suffering and plenteous of mercy. Not unto the end will he be angered. Neither into eternity will he be wroth. Not according to our iniquities has he dealt with us. Neither according to our sins hath he rewarded us. For according to the height of heaven from the earth, the Lord has made his mercy to prevail over them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our iniquities from us. Like as a father hath compassion upon his son, so hath the Lord had compassion upon them that fear him. For he knoweth whereof we are made, he remembered that we are dust. As for man, his days are as the grass, as the flower of the field, so shall he blossom forth. For when the wind is passed over it, then it shall be gone, and no longer will it know the place thereof. But the mercy of the Lord is from eternity, even unto eternity upon them that fear him, and his righteousness is upon the sons of sons, upon them that keep his testament and remember his commandments to do them. The Lord in heaven hath preferred his throne, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, all ye his angels, mighty in strength, that perform his word to hear the voice of his words. Bless the Lord, all ye his hosts, his ministers that do his will. Bless the Lord, all ye his works, in every place of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. In every place of his dominion, bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, hear my prayer, give ear unto my supplication in thy truth. Hearken unto me in thy righteousness. And enter not into judgment with thy servant, for in thy sight shall no man living be justified. For the enemy hath persecuted my soul, he hath humbled my life down to the earth. He has sat me in darkness as those that have been long dead, and my spirit within me has become despondent. Within me my heart is troubled, I remember days of old, I meditated on all thy works, I pondered on the creation of thy hands. I stretch forth my hands unto thee, my soul thirsteth after thee like a waterless land. Quickly hear me, O Lord, my spirit hath fainted away, turn not thy face away from me, lest I be like them that go down into the pit. Cause me to hear thy mercy in the morning, for in thee have I put my hope. Cause me to know, O Lord, the way wherein I should walk, for unto thee have I lifted up my soul. Rescue me from mine enemies, O Lord, unto thee have I fled for refuge. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy good spirit shall lead me in the land of uprightness. For thy name's sake, O Lord, thou shalt quicken me. In thy righteousness shall thou bring my soul out of affliction, and in thy mercy shall thou utterly destroy mine enemies. And that sh thou shalt cut off them that afflict my soul, for I am thy servant. O Lord, give ear unto my supplication, and enter not into judgment with thy servant. O Lord, give ear unto my supplication, and enter not into judgment with thy servant. Thy good spirit shall lead me in the land of uprightness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Our God and our hope, glory to thee. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have peace from above, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have peace of the whole world, the good estate of the Holy Spirit.
lips unto the Lord and call upon his holy name. God is the Lord and hath appeared unto us. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. All nations compass me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. God is the Lord and hath appeared unto us. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. This is the Lord's doing, it is marvelous in our eyes. God is the Lord and hath appeared unto us. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. From the heights so descend, O compassionate one, and thou didst submit to the three-day burial, that thou might deliver us from passion. Thou art our life and our resurrection, O Lord, glory to thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The barren wilderness thou didst make fertile with the streams of thy tears, and by thy deep sighing thou hast given fruit through thy struggles a hundredfold. Accordingly thou hast become a star for the universe, sparking with miracles. Therefore, O righteous Father John, intercede with Christ God to save our souls, both now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Thou who for our sake was born of a virgin, and didst suffer crucifixion, O good one, and didst despoiled it through death, and didst God disreveal resurrection. Despise not those whom thou hast created with thine own hand. Show forth thy love for mankind, O merciful one. Accept the intercessions of thy mother, the Theotokos, for us, and save thy despairing people, O our risen from the dead, a life of all, and a resplendent angel shouted to the women, dry your tears and proclaim to the apostles and cry out in praise that Christ the Lord hath risen, he who hath been pleased to save mankind since he is God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Thou hast verily risen from the tomb and thou didst command the righteous women to preach to the apostles the resurrection as it was written. For as for Peter, he did hasten to the tomb and when he saw the light in the grave, he was dazzled with surprise. Then he saw the linen clothes lying aside where it was not possible to see them by night, and he believed and cried out, Glory to thee, O Christ God, for thou hast saved us all, O our Savior, who still remainest in truth the radiance of the Father, both now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Let us glorify her who is the tabernacle and heavenly gate, the most holy mountain, the shining cloud, the heavenly ladder, the paradise endowed with speech, the deliverer of Eve, the precious and great treasure of the universe. For by her did salvation come to the world and the forgiveness of ancient sins. Wherefore do we cry to her, intercede with thy Son and God to grant forgiveness of sins to those who bow in true worship to thy most holy birth giving. 
Men did seal thy tomb, O Savior, and the angel did roll the stone off from off the grave, and the women witnessed thy resurrection from the dead. They proclaimed to thy disciples in Zion that thou didst rise, O life of all, and didst break asunder the bonds of death. O Lord, glory to thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Verily, when the women came with burial ointment, they heard from the grave an angelic voice saying, Cease your tears, and receive joy instead of sorrow, and cry in praise that Christ the Lord is risen, who being God was pleased to save mankind, both now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Verily, all creation rejoiceth in thee, O full of grace, the assembles of angels and the races of men. O holy temple and paradise endowed with speech, the pride of virginity from whom God was incarnate and became a child, being yet our God before the ages. For he hath made thy receptacle a throne, and thy womb more spacious than the heavens. Wherefore, O full of grace, the whole creation rejoiceth in thee, and glorifieth thee. <coughs> Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. The company of the angels was amazed. When they beheld thee, numbered among the dead, Yet thyself, O Savior, destroyed the power of death, and with thee raising up Adam, and releasing all men from hell. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. Wherefore, O women, disciples, do ye mingle sweet-smelling spices with your tears of pity? The radiant angel within the sepulchre cried, Unto the murdering women, behold the grave and understand, for the Savior is risen from the tomb. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. Very early in the morning did the murdering women run lamenting unto thy tomb. But an angel came to war them, saying, The time for lamentation is past. Weep not, but announce unto the apostles the resurrection. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. The murdering women mourned as bearing spices that drew near thy tomb, O Savior. But the angel spake unto them, saying, Why number ye the living among the dead? In that he is gone, he is risen from the grave. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. We adore the Father, as also the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Trinity in one essence, crying with the seraphim. Holy, holy, holy art thou, O Lord, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. In that thou didst bear the giver of life, O Virgin, thou didst redeem Adam from sin, and didst give to each joy in place of sadness. And he who was incarnate of thee, both God and man, hath restored to life those who had fallen therefrom. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia. It is thy name, and glorified is thy kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. The ointment
excitement bearing women came to the tomb of the life giver seeking among the dead the Lord who is not dead and when they received the glad tidings from the angels they preached to the apostles that the Lord hath risen and granted the world great mercy for my youth the enemy hath tempted me and with temptations hath he beguiled me but I O Lord trusted in thee have rejected him in shame they who hate Zion shall become like grass before it is pulled up for Christ shall cut down their necks with the scythe of torment Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Verily, in the Holy Spirit all shall live, for he is the light of light, a great God. Let us therefore praise him with the Father and the Word. Yea, let my humble heart be lightened by thy fear, lest it rise and fall from thee, O all-compassionate one. He that trusteth in the Lord shall not fear when God shall judge all with tormenting fire. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Verily, by the Holy Spirit, every divine one seeth and uttereth things to be, and performeth heavenly wonders, for he singeth to one God in three. For the Godhead, albeit of three lights, is one in leadership. To thee have I cried, O Lord, listen, and turn thine ear toward me when I shout. Purify me before thou raisest me from this place. Verily, every one shall return and disappear in his mother the earth, and shall be dissolved at once, to receive either honors or punishments as a reward for what he hath done in this lifetime. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Verily, through the Holy Spirit, one speaketh of the Godhead, the one, the thrice holy. For from the Father, who is without beginning, the Son doth proceed without time, and the Spirit, who is their equal in temperance and on the throne, hath shone forth from the Father likewise. Behold, how good and how beautiful for the brethren to live together. For of this did the Lord promise eternal life. Verily he who beautifieth the flowers of the field commandeth that no one take heed for his dress. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Verily the Holy Spirit is the cause of all, and containeth in himself the harmony of safety. For he is truly equal to the Father, and the Son, and substance. The Lord shall reign forever, thy God, O Zion, from generation to generation. The Lord shall reign forever, thy God, O Zion, from generation to generation. Praise the Lord, O my soul. The Lord shall reign forever, thy God, O Zion, from generation to generation. Let us pray to the Lord. Thou who art God, and unto, who rests in the saints, and unto thee we ascribe glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Let, Let everything, everything that, that hath breath praise the Lord. Lord. Praise your God and his saints. Praise him in the firm foundation of his power. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. And that we may be accounted worthy to hear the Holy Gospel, let us pray to the Lord God. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. At that time, Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to him, to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Saying this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom do you seek? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. Mary said to him, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold me. 
for I have not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and said to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Glory to thee, O Lord, glory to thee. In that we have beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us bow down before the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. Thy cross do we adore, O Christ, in thy holy resurrection we praise and glorify. For thou art our God, and we know none other beside thee. We call upon thy name. O come, all ye faithful, let us adore Christ's holy resurrection. For Lord, through the cross, is joy come into all the world. Ever blessing the Lord, let us sing his resurrection. For in that he endured the cross for us, he hath destroyed death by death. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy great mercy, and according to the multitude of thy compassion, blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquities, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know mine iniquity, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee only have I sinned, and done this evil before me, that thou mightest be justified in thy words, and prevail when thou art judged. For behold, I was conceived in iniquities, and in sin did my mother bear me. For behold, thou hast loved truth, the hidden and secret things of thy wisdom hast thou made manifest unto me. Thou shalt sprinkle me with this, and I shall be made clean. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be made whiter than snow. Thou shalt make me to hear joy and gladness. The bones that be humble, they shall rejoice. Turn thy face away from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and with thy governing spirit establish me. I shall teach transgressors thy ways, and the ungodly shall turn back unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall rejoice in thy righteousness. O Lord, thou shalt open my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise. For if thou hast desired sacrifice, I had given it with whole burnt offering, thou shalt not be pleased. A sacrifice unto God is a broken spirit, a heart that is broken and humbled God will not despise. Do good, O Lord, in thy good pleasure unto Zion, and let the walls of Jerusalem be built up. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with oblation and whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Open to me the doors of repentance for life givers. For my soul goeth early to the temple of thy holiness, coming in the temple. upon me, O God, according to thy great mercy, according to the multitude of thy tender mercy, blot out mine iniquities. If I think upon the multitude of my evil deeds, I tremble. 
Lord of mercy, 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 Lord of mercy. Through the mercies and compassions and love for mankind of thine only begotten Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with thine all holy, good, and life giving Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Arising from the tomb, O Almighty Savior, thou didst rouse the dead. Thou didst raise Adam while Eve danceth in her new joy at thy blessed resurrection, O Lord. And the world's farthest regions keep the festival on thine arising from the dead with gladness and thanksgiving, O thou who art greatly merciful. When thou didst despoil the dominion of Hades and hath raised the dead, O long-suffering one, thou didst meet the murmuring women, bringing them joy instead of sorrow. And unto thy apostles thou madest known the symbol of victory, O my Savior, giver of life. Thou hast enlightened creation, O lover of mankind, wherefore the world rejoices at thine arising from the dead, O thou who art greatly merciful. On March 29th in the Holy Orthodox Church, we commemorate the martyr Mark, Bishop of Arethusa, Martel Cyril, the deacon of Heliopolis, and those with him, martyrs Jonah and Barachios of Persia, and those with them, of Eustathios, the confessor, Bishop of Bithynia, 
On this same day, the fourth day of Great Lent, we make remembrance of our godly father, John, the author of the Ladder of Divine Descent, or Climacus. John, dead in the flesh and also living, living, liveth eternally, even though appearing dead and without breath, leaving letters, a ladder for the journey upwards, he showeth forth his pursuit to the journey upwards. The celebration of his feast on this day arose from the custom prevalent in the honorable monasteries of starting Great Lent with the reading of his lessons. John describes the method of elevating the soul to God as ascending a ladder. He teaches those who seek salvation how to lay a firm foundation for struggles, how to detect and fight every passion, how to avoid demonic snares, and how to rise from the rudimental virtues to the heights of godlike love and humility. John of the latter came to Mount Sinai at age 16 and remained there, first as a novice under obedience, then as a recluse, and finally as abbot until his 80th year. One time his disciple Moses fell asleep under the shade of a large stone. John, in prayer in his cell, saw that the disciple was in danger and prayed to God for him. Later, when Moses returned, he fell on his knees and gave thanks to his spiritual father for saving him from certain death. He related how in a dream he heard John calling him and he jumped up and at that moment, the stone tumbled. Had he not jumped, the stone would have crushed him. John Clemicus died on March 30th, 606. Through his intercessions of Christ, God have mercy on us, amen. I shall open my mouth and it will be filled with the spirit. And I shall speak forth to the Queen and Mother. I shall be seen joyfully singing her praises, and I shall be light to sing of her wonders. As a living and copious fountain, O Theotokos, do thou strengthen those who hymn thy praises, and are joined together in a spiritual company for thy service, and in thy divine glory, make them worthy of crowns of glory. He who sits in clouds of glory upon the throne of the Godhead, Jesus the Most High God came with mighty hand and saved those who cried out unto him. Glory to thy power, O Christ, all creation was amazed at thy divine glory. For thou, O unwedded virgin, did hold in thee the God of all, and didst bear the eternal Son, who rewards with salvation all those who hymn thy praises. As we, the godly-minded, celebrate the sacred and all honorable Feast of the Mother of God. Come, let us clap our hands together and glorify the God whom she bore. The godly-minded children worship not the creature rather than the creator, but trampling upon the thread of fire in manly fashion, they rejoiced and sang, O oh, praise, Lord, and God of our fathers, blessed art thou. We praise, we bless, and we worship the Lord. <coughs> the three holy children in the furnace, the child of the Theotokose. Then was the type, now is it fulfillment, and the whole world gathers to sing. All ye works, praise the Lord and magnify him unto all ages.
For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and glory is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Thou who wilt outstand, there is God the Word, and I truly fear or tall for to be magnified. He has shown strength with his army, has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Thou who without stain bearest God the word, and I truly fear to cost me magnify thee. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble in me. He hath filled the empty with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious be uncompared than the seraphim. Thou who without sin bearest God the word, and art truly fair, to for sin and defy thee. He, remembering his mercy, has helped his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers Abraham and his seed forever. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious be uncompared than the seraphim. Celebrate with honor the holy festival of the Mother of God and cry out, Hail, O blessed, pure, and ever virgin Theotokos. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. powers of heaven, praise thee, and unto thee we ascribe glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Say through thee, O 
his glory shall be to all his saints. Though thou distended judgment, O Lord, condemned by Pilate, thou didst not vacate thy throne, sitting with the Father. Thou didst arise from the dead, releasing the world from the bondage of the stranger, for thou art compassionate and the lover of mankind. Praise the Lord in his sanctuary, praise me in the firmament of his power. Though, O Lord, the Jews placed thee in a grave like death, the soldiers guarded thee as a slumbering king. And as the treasure of life, they sealed thee. But thou didst rise in grant incorruptibility to our souls. Praise him for his mighty acts, praise him according to his excellent greatness. Thou didst give us thy cross, O Lord, as a weapon against the Abolas, who are unable to behold its power, doth fear and tremble. For it raiseth the dead, and hath them no death. Wherefore do we worship thy burial and resurrection? Praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the psaltery and harp. The angel proclaiming thy resurrection, O Lord, did frighten the guards. But to the women he cried out, saying, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Verily he hath risen, being God, and hath granted life to the universe. Praise him with the timbrel and dance, praise him with stringed instruments and organ. Righteous Father John, in very truth thou hast the high praise of God. In thy throat every day and hour, and with active diligence, thou didst earnestly meditate on the divine, the inspired oracles and was made rich in the grace that they pour forth. Through this, O man most wise, thou becamest blessed, and this utterly overturned the counsel of the base and godless man. Praise him upon the wide cell. <coughs> praise him on the loud cymbals. Praise him on the high-sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Righteous Father John, in very truth thou hast the high praise of God in thy throat every day and hour, and with active diligence thou didst earnestly meditate on the divinely inspired oracles and was made rich in the grace that they pour forth. Through this, O man most wise, thou becamest blessed, and this utterly overturned the counsels of all base and godless men. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, and his commandments shall he greatly delight. Righteous Father John, most glorious, with streaming fountains of tears, thou didst wash thy soul cleanse of stain, standing on all night in prayer. Thou becamest a friend of God, and thou didst soar as on wings unto his love, and his divine beauty which thou worthily now dost enjoy on high, with thy fellow athletes evermore enjoy, O most blessed and most godly saint and man of prayer. <coughs> Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Righteous Father John, most glorious, since thou hast given thy mind, wings to soar up to God in faith, thou didst hate the turbulence, and impermanence of the world. For thou didst take up thy cross with ardent zeal to follow after him that beholdeth all. And thou didst subjugate the reluctant body 
to the sovereign mind by ascetic labors through the Holy Spirit's mind. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Come, let us labor in the mystical field, working therein fruits of repentance. Let us not spend ourselves in food and drink, but refer choose with fasting and prayer. For thee doth the master of labor accept. For them he giveth us the pence through which he from the death of sin. For he alone is most compassionate. Both now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Most blessed art thou, O Virgin Theotokos, for through him that was incarnate of thee is Hades despoiled. Adam is recalled from the dead. The curse is made void, Eve is set free, death is slain, and we are endowed with life. Wherefore in hymns of praise we cry aloud, Blessed art thou, O Christ our God, who is thus well pleased. Glory to thee. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to Christians are upon our next holiday. Joseph, the priest, deacons, all the clergy, and all the community in Christ. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory Pray to thee who has shown us the light. Glory be to God, O God, and thine earth, peace, and goodwill among us. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee. We glorify thee, we give thanks unto thee. O Lord, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, O Lord, God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy on us, Thou that takest away the sin of the world. Receive our prayer, O who sittest at the right hand of the Father, and have mercy on us. O Thou alone art holy, Thou only art the Lord, O Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father Almighty. Every day will I bless Thee, and I will praise Thy name forever, forever and ever. Thou the Lord, Lord, to the Lord, Lord, God, Lord, 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 Lord,
Christ, our God, and our hope, glory to the Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and into ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Master, bless. He who rose from the dead, Christ, our true God, through the intercessions of his own immaculate and all blameless Holy Mother, of the holy, glorious, and all laudable apostles, of St. Barnabas, patron and protector of this holy community, of St. John Clematis, and of all the saints, have mercy upon us, and save us for as much as is good and as mankind, through the prayers of our holy fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy upon us, and save us. Holy and joyful, have mercy on us. Holy Heavenly King, comforter of the spirit of truth, who is everywhere present, and give us all things, treasury of blessings, and giver of life, come and abide in us, cleanse us from every stain, and save our souls, O good one. Holy, glory to God in the highest, and earth, peace, goodwill among men. Glory to God in the highest, and earth, peace, goodwill among men. Having risen from the dead, and having pushed up on the Hades, thou didst lift up from the nation of the Lord, releasing all mankind from the snares of the earth, your steps and your good work. Remember me, and the Lord, and all of you, and every good work. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. In peace let us praise the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, and for the salvation of our souls, let us praise the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Unto thee are due all glory, honor, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. It is good to give thanks unto the Lord and sing thy song. 
comes to thy name, O Most High. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, O Savior, save us. To proclaim thy mercy at dawn and thy truth by night. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, O Savior, save us. So that they may declare that the Lord my God is fair, and there is no injustice in him. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, O Savior, save us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, O Savior, save us. Thine is the majesty, and thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Thou art a good God, and lovest mankind, and unto thee we ascribe glory, through the Father, and through the Son, and through the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages.
of the Holy Field, both Lord and of all the saints. With the streams of thy tears, thou didst cultivate the barrenness of the desert. And by thy sighings from the depths, thou didst bear fruit a hundredfold in labors. And thou becamest a luminary, shining with miracles upon John, our righteous Father, intercede with Christ God that our souls be saved. O Barnabas, thou became a perfect and faithful servant of the Lord. Thou wast the first of the seventy disciples, worthy to be the companion. Thou 
but it's true to all that Christ was the Savior. Wherefore we celebrate thy divine memory with hymns and songs. <laughs> to be the champion leader, to I offer thanks of victory for Theotokos, thou who hast delivered me from terror, but as thou that hast that power invincible, O glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. <clears throat> Holy God, Holy Mighty, to Abraham, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, he swore by himself, saying, Surely I will bless you and multiply you. And thus Abraham 
having patiently endured, obtained the promise. Men indeed swear by one greater than themselves, and in all their disputes an oath is final for confirmation. So when God desired to show more convincingly to the heirs of the promise the unchangeable character of his purpose, he interposed with an oath, so that through two unchangeable things in which it is impossible that God should prove false, we who have fled for refuge might have strong encouragement to seize the hope set before us. We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters into the inner shrine behind the curtain, where Jesus has gone as a forerunner on our behalf, having become a high priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. Peace be to thee that readeth, and to thy spirit. of the Holy Apostle and Evangelist Mark and Haley proclaim the glad tidings with great power unto the fulfillment of the gospel of his beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Let it be to me according to thy word. Wisdom attend, let us hear the holy gospel. Peace be to all. And to thy spirit. The reading from the holy gospel according to St. Mark. At that time, a man came to Jesus, kneeling down and saying unto him, Teacher, I brought my son to you, for he has a dumb spirit, and wherever it seizes him, it dashes him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. And I asked your disciples to cast it out, and they were not able. And Jesus answered him, O oh, faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. And when the spirit saw Jesus, immediately it convulsed the boy. And he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at his mouth. And Jesus asked his father, How long has he had this? And he said from childhood, and it has often cast him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have pity on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that a crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You dumb and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out, and the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when Jesus had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? And Jesus said to them, This cannot, kind cannot be driven out by anything, but by prayer and fasting. They went out from there and passed through Galilee, and Jesus would not have anyone know it. For he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man will be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And after he is killed, he will rise on the third day. Glory to thee, O Lord, glory to thee. Yeah. 
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Today is the fourth Sunday of Great Lent on which we commemorate St. John Climacus, author of the Ladder of Divine Ascent. St. John is remembered during Lent as an exemplary ascetic and spiritual athlete who became a shining example both to aspiring monastics and ordinary Orthodox faithful. His book has given generations of Orthodox much needed guidance in the Christian life. Today we are often warned to be careful in reading the latter of Divine Ascent without an experienced person, a guide to help us. And this is probably very good advice, since anyone who approaches it like a modern book, a modern self-help, or 30 days to spiritual perfection kind of idea, is going to be not only for a big surprise, but also probably for a very terrible disappointment when he discovers that he can't even complete step one on the ladder. A lot of us still struggle with the most basic Christian things, like keeping our rule of prayer, for example, keeping that faithfully, keeping it consistently. And we're probably, in that case, not ready to take on bigger struggles if it is hard for us simply to say our own prayers on a persistent basis. Well, we need to reach a greater level first of humility and obedience to God before we're ready to take on anything else. What do I mean by humility? Why do we need humility to pray? Well, I think that our own pride is the greatest single obstacle to our advancement in any level of the Christian faith. It's not weakness. It's not our fallenness exactly. It's not our lack of faith. But it is our pride that holds us back from God. It should be obvious, for example, that if we won't make it a priority to have our little rule of prayer and keep it with consistency, if we find so many other reasons why we can't take that five or 10 minutes in the morning to pray to God, well, it's not because prayer is too hard. It's very simple. It's not because, I don't know, we don't, yeah, whatever the reason is, it's usually, really, if we were honest, it's because we don't want to pray. This is why we can't keep our rule. Prayer under pride becomes an obligation, a tiresome duty that is often left undone. It's amazing how difficult it seems to us to keep our prayers. And of course, this is just one example of the many Christian disciplines, but it's something that most of us encounter, well, every day. Prayer, we find, isn't satisfying, and it seems so out of place to the rest of our life. We live life, oh yeah, but I gotta stop and pray. You know, it seems like our prayers just don't quite match up with the way we actually live, which, if we were to look at it closely, we'd have to say, we live pretty secular lives. And prayer just doesn't fit in with that. Of course, the problem is that under pride, we think that we can live just fine without God. We don't need prayer. We might actually be happier if we didn't have this obligation hanging over our head. The prideful soul avo avoids prayer, feeling only a certain guilt for not being a better Christian. That's what we encounter, not a loss of God in our lives, but a guilt that we're not doing better, that we're not as good as we thought we were. It is an entirely self-centered orientation. Maybe, we all would really like to be better Christians, but maybe what we really need is to simply become real Christians. Real Christians are those whose chief desire is to love God and follow Jesus with their whole heart and their whole life. If distracted momentarily from this pursuit, as we all are, the real Christian will get back on that as quickly as possible. They openly confess their sinfulness, and they know that there is nothing they can do to make themselves better except cleave to God. They obey God out of humility 
and out of that beautiful desire to draw ever near to Christ. In that case, prayer is consistent with all of their life and all of their desires. It is not that odd five or ten moments a day that, uh, that we have to do sometimes without really knowing why. Prayer springs forth from a heart that loves and desires God. And many of us in thinking or looking at it that way might say that, well, you know, I was like that once. I really was. I really did love God. I really did want to be a Christian and follow Jesus Christ. But I don't know what. Something happened to me. I seem to have lost something in my life. But have we ever considered that it might actually be our own pride that is the root of the problem? We know, all of us know, that we have pride. But we also, all of us, think that we have it under control, that we have it managed, and that actually we're doing a pretty good job of it, too. You know, I've, I, you know I have pride, but, you know, I keep it under, under wraps. It's okay. Once in a while, it slips out, but it's generally, I got it, I got it controlled. We don't see how pride permeates and taints absolutely everything we do, absolutely every aspect of our life. It, it permeates every thought, every word, every deed. Pride rules us, but at the same time, it absolutely denies that. It says, no, 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 it's not me. I'm not, you don't know, oh, no, you're in control, not me. The fathers teach, and this is a prominent teaching, that pride is very difficult to detect in oneself. But we say, well, that's probably true for others, but not for me. You know, I see my pride. I, I know I, it's there. I understand. I get it. What I don't understand, though, is why it's so hard to be a Christian. And so pride is blinding us, though we don't even know. This is why I suggest that wonderful spiritual guides like St. John Climacus and his Ladder of Divine Ascent are certainly good and useful, but probably best for those who are willing to take a real hammering to their pride, because that's what books like these do. Such things reveal to us how little it is that we love God and how far we are from being anything that could be called good Christians. And you know what? That's actually pretty good. That's, that may be just what we need to see that we are not good Christians. The best way to deal with pride is to wound it over and over. Stop coddling it. Stop protecting it. Stop defending it. Take hurt to your pride until we lose all hope in ourselves, at being better, at being good Christians, and turn to God to save us. You see, unlike pride, humility accepts the fact that we will never make ourselves good enough for God. If we lived to be as old as Methuselah, we couldn't do it, and I think that was about 969 years. Humility knows that only God can make us good, and embraces that together with his grace. Pride neither understands grace nor is ever really quite comfortable with it. Pride says, I must earn it. I must deserve it. I need to prove myself worthy. Pride puts off confession or minimizes confession or makes it very, very wooden and distant from what is real because it can't stand to see itself helplessly defeated by sin. I'll go to confession when I can show the priest that I've made progress, when I'm just not doing the same things over and over again, when I can look and, and, and say to him, yes, I used to have this sin, but it's okay now. Pride lives in its own fantasy world, whereas humility accepts the truth that sets us free. The truth is not pretty, but it, is, it makes us free. It releases us from bondage to pride and ego. Humility says, Behold my stinking wounds, O Lord, which I have made worse by neglect. I have covered them with the fig leaves of denial, seeking to conceal them from thy grace. 
Their toxins have filled my body, and I lay dying. But do thou, O Lord, make an example of me, of thy mercy, and heal me. You see, pride wants to do that, wants to, wants to have some bargaining chip, some, something that it can say, you know, I'll trade you, God, if you forgive me. I'll, you know. Humility says, I'm just dying. Save me. <laughs> Help me, O God. Have mercy upon me. Humility, in fact, follows the only true and sensible course that is available to us, and that is, it turns to God. Pride says, I can do all things in Christ. Humility says, I can do nothing. And I am nothing without Christ. We should confess our pride and the delusion it brings and then admit at least that it is far worse in us than even we can see. If someone could show us the extent of our pride, I think, well, first of all, we'd be insulted and outrage and never speak to that person again. But believe me, pride is bad. And it is bad in us, and it is worse in us. And the more that we think we're, we have an idea of that, we probably don't. But if we voluntarily crucify our pride, our self-will, our thoughts, our opinions, and humble ourselves before God and before men, he will heal us. He will strengthen us in the faith. We may very well need to be broken for our pride to be devastated, for us to hit rock bottom before we can reach a state of true humility. But even that is a very, very small price to pay to finally meet our Savior and to know his love for us. To the glory of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace, wisdom. That guarded always by thy might, we may ascribe glory unto thee, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. desires and pleasures of the flesh is worthy to approach or draw nigh or to serve thee, O King of glory, or to serve thee as a great and terrible thing even to the heavenly powers. But nevertheless, of that unspeakable and boundless love toward mankind, thou hast become man, yet without change or alteration, and as Lord of all, to take the name of our high priest, and deliver unto us the ministry of this liturgic and our bloody sacrifice. For thou alone, O Lord our God, rulest over those in heaven and on earth who art born on the throne of the cherubim, who art Lord of the seraphim and King of Israel, who Lord art holy and rest in thy holy place. Wherefore, I implore thee, who alone art good and art ready to listen, look down upon me, a sinner, and thine unprofitable servant, and cleanse my soul and my heart from the evil conscience. And by the power of thy Holy Spirit, and who am endued with the grace of the priesthood, enable me, who am endued with the grace of the priesthood, to stand before this thy holy table, and to perform the sacred mystery thy holy and immaculate body and precious blood. For I draw near unto thee, and bowing my neck, I pray thee, turn not thy face from me, neither cast me out from among thy children, but vouchsafe that these gifts may be offered unto thee by me, thy sinful and unworthy servant. For thou that shalt redeem that offers, and is offered that accepts, and is distributed, O Christ our God, and unto thee we ascribe glory, together with thy Father, as an everlasting, and that all holy good and life-giving spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. We who mystically represent the cherubim and sing to the life-giving trinity, the thrice holy hymn, let us now lay aside all earthly care, that we may receive the King of all, who comes invisibly abhorned by the angelic host. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We who mystically represent the cherubim and sing to the life-giving trinity, the thrice holy hymn, let us now lay aside all earthly care, that we may receive the King of all, who comes invisibly abhorned. We who mystically represent the cherubim and sing to the life-giving trinity the thrice holy hymn, let us now lay aside all earthly care. That we may receive the King of all, who comes invisibly abhorned by the
the angelic hosts. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.
wrapped it in fine linen and spices and laid it in a grave for the body, but in hell your soul is gone. In paradise with the keys to the throne of the Father and the Spirit of Christ, you are contained and fearless of all things. Compassions of thine only begotten Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with thine O holy, good, and life giving Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. is in our midst. Yes, never shall be. crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, and suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who 
proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. <coughs> grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with thy spirit. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord. Master of all, Lord of heaven and earth, and of all creation, both visible and invisible, who sitteth upon the throne of glory, and beholdest the depths, who art without beginning, invisible, incomprehensible, uncircumscript, immutable, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our great God and Savior, our hope, who is the image of thy goodness, a seal of equal type, in himself showing forth thee, the Father, the living word, the true God, the wisdom before all ages, the life, sanctification, might, the true light, through whom the Holy Spirit was manifested, the spirit of truth, the gift of adoption, the pledge of an, of an inheritance to come, the first fruits of eternal good things, the life-giving power, the fountain of holiness, by whom enabled every rational and intelligent creature to serve thee and send up to thee perpetual praise, for all things are thy servants. Yea, angels and archangels, thrones, dominions, principalities, authorities, powers, and the many-eyed cherubim praise thee. Round about thee stand the six-wing seraphim, and with twain they cover their faces, and with twain their feet, and with twain they fly, continually crying out to one another with unceasing praises, singing the triumphal hymn, shouting, proclaiming, and saying, gone <clears throat> before all the ages. Uh, he appeared upon earth and dwelt among men and was incarnate of a holy virgin and did empty himself, taking on the form of a servant and becoming conformed to the fashion of our lowliness that he might make us conformable to the image of his glory. For as by man sin entered into the world and by sin death, so it seemed good to thine only begotten Son who is in thy bosom our God and Father to be born of a woman, the holy Theotokos, and ever virgin Mary, to be born under the law, that he might condemn sin in his flesh, that they who were dead in Adam might be made alive in thy Christ, and become a dweller in this world. And giving commandments of salvation, he released us from the delusions of idols, and brought us into a knowledge of thee, the true God and Father, having won us unto himself for his own people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and being purified with water and sanctified with the Holy Spirit, he gave himself a ransom to death, whereby we were held, 
sold into bondage under sin, and having descended into hell through the cross, that he might feel all things with himself, he loosed the pains of death and rose again from the dead on the third day, making a way for all flesh through the resurrection from the dead. For it was not possible that the author of life should be holden of corruption, that he might be the firstfruits of those who have fallen asleep, the firstborn from the dead. And he shall be all things, the first in all things. And ascending into heaven, he sat down at the right hand of thy majesty on high, and he shall come again to render unto every man according to his works. And he is left with us as memorials of his saving passion, these things which we have spread forth according to his commandment. For when he was about to go forth through his voluntary and ever memorable and life-creating death, on the night in which he gave himself for the life of the world, took bread in his holy and spotless and blameless hands, when he had shown it unto thee as God and Father, and given thanks, and blessed it, and hallowed it, and broken it. He gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you, for the remis <coughs> remission of sins. <coughs> In like manner, having taken the cup of the fruit of the vine, and mingled it, and given thanks, and blessed it, and hallowed it, he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Drink ye all of this, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Amen. Amen. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you shall eat this bread and drink of this cup, you do proclaim my death and confess my resurrection. Wherefore, O Master, we also, having in remembrance this saving passion and life-giving cross, his three days burial and resurrection from the dead, his ascension into heaven, and session at thy right hand as God and Father, and his glorious and terrible second advent. Thine own of thine own we offer unto thee in behalf of all and for all. We praise thee. We bless thee. Thou hast graciously permitted to minister at thy holy altar, not through our own righteousness, for we have done no good deed upon earth. But because of thy mercies and bounties, which thou hast richly poured out upon us, have now boldness to draw near unto this, thy holy altar, and presenting unto thee the empty types of the holy body and blood of thy Christ, we pray thee and implore thee, O holy of holies, by the favor of thy goodness, that thy Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts here spread forth, and bless them and hallow them, and show this bread to be itself the precious body of our Lord, Je Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And that this cup to be the precious blood of our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ, Amen. Amen. which was shed for the life of the world and its salvation. Amen. 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 And as for us, partakers of the one bread and of the one cup, do thou unite all to one another into communion of the one Holy Spirit. And grant that no one of us may partake of the holy body and blood of thy Christ, unto judgment or unto condemnation, but rather that we may find mercy and grace with all the saints who have ever been well-pleasing unto thee, forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, teachers, and every righteous spirit made perfect in faith. Especially our O Holy Immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary. For the in thee rejoice with the full of grace. And whose supplications look down upon us, O God, be mindful of all those who fall before us. Those absent from the ages, for 
Be mindful, O Lord, of the people here present and of those who are absent for a reasonable cause, and have mercy upon them and upon us according to the multitude of thy mercies. Uh, among the first, be mindful, O Lord, of our Father and Metropolitan Joseph, whom do thou grant unto thy holy churches in peace, safety, honor, health, and length of days, and rightly dividing the word of thy truth. And of all mankind. Be mindful, O Lord, of the priesthood, the diaconate in Christ, and every priestly rank, and put not to confusion any one of us who stand about thy holy altar. Visit us with thy loving kindness, O Lord. Manifest thyself unto us all in thy rich compassions. Grant us temperate and healthful seasons. Give gentle showers upon the earth under fruitfulness. Bless the crown of the year of thy beneficence. Make the schisms of the churches to cease. Quench the ragings of hostile nations. Speedily destroy by the might of thy Holy Spirit uprisings of heresies. Receive us all into thy kingdom, making us children of the light and of the day. And grant unto us thy peace and thy love, O Lord our God, for all things hast thou given unto us. And grant us with one mouth and one heart to glorify and praise thine all-honorable and majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. And the mercies of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with you all. And with thy spirit. All each remembrance of all the saints again and again. Vouchsafe, O Lord, that with boldness and without condemnation we may dare to call upon thee, the heavenly God, as Father, and to say, Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be heaven. thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. O Master, Lord, the Father and compassions and the God of all comfort, bless, sanctify, guard, strengthen, fortify those who have bowed their heads unto thee. Withdraw them from every evil work, unite them to every good work, and graciously grant that without condemnation they may partake 
of thy pure and life-giving mysteries unto remission of their sins and unto the communion of thy Holy Spirit. Through the grace and compassion and love toward man of thine only begotten Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with thine all holy, good, and life-giving Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Look down, O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, from thy holy dwelling place and from the throne of the glory of thy kingdom, and come to sanctify us, O thou who sitteth on high with the Father, and are here invisibly present with us, and vouchsafe by thy mighty hand to impart unto us thine immaculate body and precious blood, and through us unto all thy people. O God, be gracious unto me, a sinner, and have mercy upon me. O God, be gracious unto me, a sinner, and have mercy upon me. O God, be gracious unto me, a sinner, and have mercy upon me. Let us attend. Holy things are for the holy. One is broken, holy. distributed as the Lamb of God who has never broken yet, never disunited, One ever eaten yet, never consumed, Jesus but it's sanctifying those who partake thereof. The fullness of the cup of the faith of the Holy Spirit. I believe, O oh Lord, and, and I, I confess, confess that Thou art truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. And I believe that this is truly Thine own immaculate body, and that this is truly Thine own precious blood. Wherefore I pray Thee, have mercy upon me, and forgive the my transgressions, of blood from my both voluntary and involuntary, of word and of deed, of knowledge and of ignorance, and make me worthy to partake without condemnation of thine immaculate mysteries, unto remission of my sins, and unto life everlasting. Amen. Of thy mystical supper, O Son of God, accept me today as a communicant, for I will not speak of thy mystery to thine enemies. Neither will I give thee a kiss as to Judas, but like the thief will I confess thee. Remember me, O Lord, in thy kingdom, not unto judgment, nor unto condemnation. Be my partaking of thy holy mysteries, O Lord, but unto the healing of soul and body. Touch my lips and show they
We have seen the true light. We have received the heavenly spirit. We have found the true faith, worshiping the undivided Trinity. For he has saved us. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens, and thy glory behold the earth. Amen. Blessed is our God, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Let our mouths be filled with thy praise, O Lord, that we may sing of thy glory. For thou hast permitted us to partake of thy holy, divine, immortal, and life-giving mysteries. Establish us in thy sanctification, that all the day we may meditate upon thy righteousness. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We give thanks unto thee, O Lord, our God, for the participation in thy holy, pure, and immortal, and heavenly mysteries, which thou hast given unto us for the welfare and sanctification and healing of our souls and bodies. Do thou, the same Lord of all, grant that the communion of the holy body and blood of thy Christ may be unto us, unto faith which cannot be put to confusion, unto uh, love unfeigned, unto increase of wisdom, unto the healing of soul and body unto the turning aside of every adversary, unto the fulfillment of thy commandments, unto an acceptable defense at the dread judgment seat of Christ. For thou art our sanctification, and unto thee we ascribe glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In Save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Preserve the fullness of thy church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of thy house. Glorify them and recompense by thy divine power. And forsake us not who hope on thee. Give peace to thy world, to thy churches, to the priests, to all civil authorities, to our armed forces, and to all thy people. For every good and perfect gift is from above and cometh down from thee, the Father of lights. And unto thee Ascribe glory, thanksgiving, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord, henceforth and forevermore. Blessed.
Blessed be the name of the Lord, henceforth and forevermore. Blessed be the name of the Lord, henceforth and forevermore. grace be upon you always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Glory to thee, O Christ, our God, and our whole glory to thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Father. May he who rose from the dead, Christ, our true God, through the intercessions of his all-immaculate and all-blameless Holy Mother, by the might of the precious and life-giving cross, by the protection of the honorable bodiless powers of heaven, at the supplication of the honorable glorious prophet, forerunner and Baptist John, of the holy glorious and all laudable apostles, of our Father among the saints, Basil the Great, Archbishop of Caesarea and Cappadocia, whose divine liturgy we have now celebrated, of the holy, glorious, and right victorious martyrs, of our venerable and God-bearing fathers, of Saint Barnabas, patron and protector of this holy community, of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, of our venerable and God-bearing father, John Climacus of Sinai, author of the latter, of the martyr Mark, the bishop of Arethusa, the martyr Cyril, the deacon of Heliopolis, and those with him, Martyrs Jonah and Barakisios of Persia, and those with them, and Eustasios of the, of the confessor, Bishop of Athenia, whose memory we celebrate today, and of all the saints, have mercy upon us and save us for as much as he is good and love us mankind. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. 